This is Lubbock High School. President Bill Clinton is here today promoting his wife Hillary and we're coming out to give the gospel. We got Dorothy and Mandy with us here <laughs> and me and uh, we're going to get around the corner. There's a big crowd around the corner TV stations. We're going to go see if we can do an open air. I was a liar. I was a thief. Now check this one out. Jesus himself said, You have heard it said of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now who can say you have never looked at somebody without those thoughts that you wouldn't want to share with mom, right? Right, it doesn't happen. Does so do here we stand before God guilty. That's that's what the law does. And so the change is is what's got to happen inside of us. First of all, we've got to agree with God that we are guilty. We've got to agree that we are sinners and that we deserve the wrath of God. We deserve the lake of fire. We deserve hell for eternity, right? All right, so you agree. So what must I do to escape that? He did something. Well, I love Jesus too. We all agree with you. What is your point? Why are you here? I'm getting there. Okay. If, you, if you load the message, you know where I'm going. Go for it. Jesus said that unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Now listen to this. God did something for you so he, you don't have to perish. Now he didn't, God just can't outright forgive. A lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have a one-to-one -one with God, and he's just going to say, oh, come on in. No, this ain't the good old boy club. Here in West Texas, we kind of have that idea where God just going to wink at us and nudge, say, come on in. If he does that, he is unjust and he is wicked. If I stood in a court and I told the judge, hey, judge, I know I robbed that bank, but will you forgive me? No, he's not going to do it because he's sworn to uphold justice and he's got to withhold that. So, God
God did something for us all that would withhold His justice, but withhold His forgiveness as well. This is what He did. 2,000 years ago, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die a sinner's death on the cross. It was a shameful, brutal death. Jesus took on all of our sin. He took on all those lies, all those thefts, all those adulteries in our hearts. He took those to the cross. Now what He did on the cross, He took the wrath of God. God poured down His wrath on His holy, perfect Son. And He poured His indignation on Him. He died. Now, that paid the fine. That's how God can be just in His forgiveness and paying the fine. Now, in order to receive that, here's what you do. You've got to, first of all, repent. You acknowledge to God you're sinful. You ask for God to forgive you. And you forsake that sin. You turn away from it. You don't do it anymore. The other half is you trust. You trust in Jesus as your Savior to save you from that judgment to come. Because there is a judgment day. It's appointed once to die, and then after that, the judgment. So we will all stand before God in judgment. And if we have repented and put our trust in Jesus, our Savior, and as if we're trusting in Him as our Lord, we're submissive to Him, we will be saved on that day. Now what's wrong with that deal? I had some speakers earlier. Where are you? <laughs> We don't have any sinners in this crowd. They're all good people, right? I lost my good Christian over here that was telling me earlier. So anyway, God cannot just outright forgive. If He did that, He would be unjust and wicked. And our God is not that. Our God is holy. Our God is good. And that is the only change that will change this nation. Our forefathers broke from the oppression of the English government to come over here and to start a new nation where they could worship freely, they could be without the king's rule and dominion, and we could have democracy. Democracy was birthed on Christian principles. This is about change. They are promising change, and in order to change, we must repent and trust in our Savior. That's, it's got everything to do with the campaign. What does that have to do with Hillary? Hillary is promising change just like Obama's promising change. And I'm telling the good people in the crowd that we must change within ourselves. We must humble ourselves before God and realize we are wicked, radically depraved sinners, just as the Bible says. Did you know the Bible says that there is so none do support, good? Do you support Senator Clinton? I support Jesus Christ. I am out here for the message of Jesus Christ and His gospel alone. I am not supporting or endorsing or denying any political parties. I am here to preach Christ and Christ crucified. That is the whole purpose of our existence on this earth. We live, we die, we will be judged. How will you fare on that judgment day? As of right now, many of you in this crowd will stand before God and you will say, God, I never heard of you. And God will say, you liar. I sent that guy down to Lubbock, Texas in February to Bill Clinton's arrival and he gave you my gospel. He told you what you must do to be saved. You cannot trust in Allah. You cannot trust in Buddha. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me, is what Jesus said. That is a radical statement that is an exclusionary statement. That's why they wanted to kill Jesus. Jesus was making these statements that they called him a heretic. They called him a blasphemer because he said that he was God, and he was God. We know that He was God because He rose from the grave. He defeated death. He paid for your sins. So what you must do is repent. Receive that forgiveness. That is the only change that will change this nation. Again, Obama cannot change this nation. Hillary cannot change this nation. Huckabee cannot change this nation. McCain cannot change this nation. God alone and his godly principles will change this nation 
if we humble ourselves before God and we bow down and submit to His authority, we will say to Him, my God, my Lord, and my Savior, and that will change this nation. Did you know our nation was founded on Christian principles, on godly morals, and here we go today changing out every aspect of that. We are erasing it from the history books. Take a tour of D.C. and you will see where they are hiding the Christian message. The prophet Jeremiah said to seek the old paths. And that's exactly what our forefathers were doing when they founded this country. They were seeking the old paths. God said in the book of Jeremiah that you have forsaken my paths. You have offered incense to false gods. And God destroyed Israel for that. And we must repent of our wicked ways and turn to God. And again, you think, hey, I'm not a sinner. I'm a good guy. I pay my taxes. I pay my bills. I get my kids to school. It's no big deal. Examine your hearts. Can you say that, that you stand with a clean conscience? Does your conscience forgive you in the dead of night when you lie to your wife or when you lie to your husband or your boss? Do you sleep with a clean conscience at night? That's not just some weird thing within you. That's the conscience that Almighty God has put in you. Almighty God has given us a creation that declares Himself. We look at this creation, we look at the trees in the sky, and God Almighty says, I am. And we say, you are not. We say, I am. God set the planets in motion. He told the stars to shine. He told them to blink. He took the planets to whirl. He put the water on the earth. He divided the land. He made man. He tells the whole universe to spin and do this until I tell you to stop. And then he tells man, humble yourself to me, repent, and I will forgive you. And man says, no, I will not. That's what man does. That's our sinful pride. Oh, I'm a fool. You ain't got to tell me I'm a fool for Jesus Christ. If we stand in our pride, if we stand here and refuse to bow our back to Jesus Christ, our knee will bow to Him on that day. We will be judged and we will be condemned to an eternal lake of fire. I implore each and every one of you to examine yourselves in the light of this law I've exposed to you today. Jesus Christ came to fulfill that law. He did not come to put the burden of the law on your neck. Let there be no confusion. You cannot keep that law. You've already lied. You've already stolen. You've already committed adultery in your heart. God says you will have no other God before me. When we do not submit ourselves to God, when we do not humble ourselves, we have set ourselves up as God. And that's the platform of the New Age Revolution today. I am God. Turn it to Oprah Winfrey. That's a lot of your gods right now. Oprah is God. She says, the being within. Did you know Oprah Winfrey claims to be a good Baptist? I don't think a Baptist church would have her. It, it, her doctrine does not match with the doctrine of the Bible. She says that her holiness, when she sits on a chair, she becomes holy, the chair is holy. What kind of nonsense is that? Examine yourself. Do you think you're holy? I know I'm not holy. If I stand on this stool, I'm not holy. The stool's not holy. I am wicked and I am radically to play. Ask my mom about how many sins I did before I was five years old. Ask your own mother how many sins you did before you were five years old. They would be glad to tell you. Well, you know what? This whole world is guilty, right? I mean, I was a man for serious. We are guilty before God. How about you? Are you innocent or guilty? Oh, don't go. You were so brave to speak to me. Come on. The guilt consumes him. He can't talk about it. 
How about anybody? Is there anybody in this crowd that says, I am perfect? I don't need God? A lot of you. But I need God. He needs God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, perhaps. I'm perfect, but I need God. You are not perfect without God. Is that a correct statement? Right. In Christ That's Jesus, right. we are perfect. That's right. Now, you may think that this is a bunch of nonsense and you don't need this message. Again, you're ignoring your conscience. You must hear this message. You must receive the gospel. The command is to repent and believe and you shall be saved. What's wrong with that? I'll tell you what people don't like about that message, repentance, because you know what? You have to admit to God that you're wicked. That's the problem with it, right? Nobody wants to do that. We have a gentleman here that says you're perfect. Would you ever admit that you're wicked? No, it's a hard thing to do. That's what we don't like about repentance. And that's what God demands. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's what His Holy Scripture says. So if I stand here and say I am perfect and I do not need a Savior, He resists me and I am damned in hell for eternity. Right? Right. Let your conscience talk to you today. Do not ignore your conscience anymore. If you do, you will wake up dead one day and it will be too late. That's why I'm out here telling you this message. You know, a lot of people, there's a new wishy-washy Christian movement out there that they say, you know, Jesus was love, love, love. You better believe Jesus was love, but Jesus taught repentance. He taught the wrath of God. He taught the indignation and fury of God. Did you know that Jesus on that cross, he took on the wrath of God? This is God the Father turning his wrath on God the Son. Why did he do it? Why? He had to to withhold his justice, right? He had to do that. He couldn't just forgive sin. God poured out his wrath, his indignation on Jesus Christ, the perfect Messiah. And that is what will save us through his resurrection if we repent and trust in the Savior. Now we have a website. I'm, I'm offering if you guys have anything to say to me, you got an open forum. You got satellite trucks down here with national news. Hey, be a hero. Be on Jay Leno. Cut down the kook on the stool. But if you're, you're not brave enough to talk today, we've got a website. It's repentandtrust.org. I named it Repent and Trust to help you to remember what you must do to be saved. Repent and trust. You can't work your way into heaven. If I try to work my way into heaven, God's going to mock and laugh at that. Did you know that He says your works are like filthy rags? Your works are like a used menstrual cloth is what God says in His Holy Bible. That's a harsh word, but that's what God Himself wrote in the Bible. And that's how our works are before God. If I stood before a judge and I said, hey judge, I know I robbed the bank, but you know what? I polished your car. He's going to say, you coop, get out of here. What are you thinking? So we cannot rely on our works to get us into heaven. You know, there's, there's some religions that say, if you go to a certain part of the world, at least once in your life, if you pray a certain amount of times each day, that perhaps God will give you forgiveness. You're going to bribe the creator of the universe with your lousy works? What? If I can bribe a God like that, no thanks. I can't bribe a judge to get off the hook for robbing the bank, so why am I going to bribe a God of the universe to get out of damnation and hell? So anyway, is there any questions out here tonight? You got one. So you, is Hillary bad? Is she like the devil? Or what's the no, I am not out here against Hillary. I am out here, we were talking about change and the true change that comes within through the gospel. That's the message today. But, you know, the Bible has just been written by humans. It's like, humans invented God. It the the Bible, the Bible was divinely inspired. The, the Bible, he's not going to listen, but I'll tell you. I will. The, the Bible was divinely inspired by God. When you take a pen and you write a letter, you don't write the letter. 
your pen writes the letter. God wrote the letter of the Bible yeah, through men. And what, what's keeping you? Your pride, right? You got, you got your perspective, I've got mine. But what about your conscience? How come your conscience agrees about lying well, is wrong? Good and bad is just defined by humans. We're just animals. That's, like, we're just well, if, if that's animals. the case, that would vary by culture to culture. I can go down to the well, pygmies the that talk to each other by clucking at each other, and they know it's wrong to lie and steal and commit adultery. But the only reason why we don't do it because we don't want anarchy. Like, I don't kill you because I want to be alive myself. You know, that yeah. goes against evolution. Are you well, an no, evolutionist? Everybody is. I am not. I'm a creationist. Not I can't believe in evolution. Eventually. Your your thought right there goes against evolution because if it if I have morals for the betterment of man, evolution says I kill my fellow man to better me. That's what evolution well, teaches. So that's always, antagonistic to well, it. Well, right now it would be, it put me in a bad position because he's going to arrest me, and then so. There would be no, if, if we truly followed out evolution, there would be no reason to even have kids because they're competition. I would need to kill my children so I could feed myself. Yeah, that's all good. I was just, I, I was wondering why you were here. But yeah, and don't think I'm yelling at you, I'm yelling so the crap's here. That's all good. You have a good day. Have, have a good one. Thank you. Any other, anybody got any questions? What's your point? The point is, repent today before it's too late. How, how much longer do you have left on this earth? I don't know. You don't? What if, what if somebody driving by runs you down and you're under their tires, your that's, blood's that's falling out and you die? That's unlikely. So what, what else is your point? Your point? My point is, if you do not repent and trust in the Savior today, you may die before and you will spend eternity in hell. Does that's that not scary. concern that's you? Scary, but that, I mean, we don't have to live that scary way. No, no, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to show you the the love of God, the justice of God. You don't come to God because you're scared of hell. Did all you hear me? I am not trying to scare you into hell. You do not come to God because you're scared of hell. You come to God because He's good, He's holy, and He loves you. That's why you come to God. When you shake your fist at Him and you tell Him, I will not come to you, I bow down to me and me alone, that's when God's wrath and indignation says, you will burn for eternity. And He did that on His Son so you don't have to suffer that. Why you come out here? The Gospel. We are commanded in Mark 16, 15 to go and preach the Gospel. Did you know that there are a lot of people today that believe themselves to be Christians, yet they refuse to speak the gospel? If I were a member of PETA and I went down at the steak and ale and ate steaks every night, you'd call me a hypocrite. Now, if I call myself I a Christian, a if, you ate steaks every night. if I say I'm a member of PETA, you would. PETA, they don't like harmful treatment to animals. If I call myself a Christian and I don't take the gospel to a lost and dying world, I am a hypocrite. Is that right? That's reason. Hey, go down to the end of the line. They haven't heard you yet. <laughs> well, I will. I'm fielding questions right now. Well, what's your rejection? Well, hey, well, what's your name? What's your name? He had such a brave start, but I lost him. He does have a prideful heart, just like all of us. We have prideful hearts. That's it. That's the message. Repent and trust in the Savior today. Repent and trust God or but what they fire got, off what at What they got to do with this ceremony that we have here right a crowd now? Here. Hey, I'm that calling the crowd. God ain't got nothing to do with this right here. Hey, have you ever seen those guys on street corners out there with signs yelling What's at that? the wind? They ain't got nothing to do with this. I'm explaining to you. Listen this to me. This is separation of church and state. This Listen to a, me. This is a political situation. You don't want me to And what you're doing is talking about something that got to do something with the church. Listen to that me. That ain't got nothing to do with us. If I went out onto a street and, and started, don't, we he don't want the answer. He wants to out talk. We don't vote on what God thinks or what he thinks. You don't care about God because, because we you're vote wicked, on our sinful heart. We don't care about That's what right. you're talking about. This crowd, That's what I'm you saying. can't we judge them like listen. that. We don't care what God he is saying. judging oh, you right saying. now. You can't judge these people. I, I ain't trying to tell you. I'm just saying what you're trying to do is judge or make them judge, and it's wrong. That's enough. 
Uh, you're on, you're standing on LISD property right now. What, what am I supposed to do? You're still on LISD property. Right here? I and thank you for your time. Oh, I am going to street. take this young but gentleman's you know advice. You know I'm going to continue, continue on down, down the ground. will inherit the kingdom of God. God so there again, we get to change, right? You gotta change. Right, well, to God be a Christian, you gotta change, right? And in order to change, well, I mean, there's now. something you gotta do. Oh yeah, you know, I, I examined myself in that law and I saw how wicked I was. I was. I was a liar, I was a thief. Now check this one out. Jesus himself said, you have heard it said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now who can say you have never looked at somebody without those thoughts that you wouldn't want to share with mom, right? Right, it doesn't happen. So here we stand before God guilty. That's, that's what the law does. And so the change is, is what's got to happen inside of us. First of all, we've got to agree with God that we are... Hey, if I could have your attention, you are all out here tonight to see President Bill Clinton. He's talking about the wife and her, her policy of change. What's the big buzz, buzzword for the campaign? Yeah! It's change, right? I mean, we want some change! I need some pictures of dead babies, too. We want some change, right? Obama's talking change, Hillary's talking change, but we want change. Now, change is a hard thing, right? Because change has to come from inside. I can't change you, you can't change me. I see that it looks like there's some married folks in the line. Has any of you, you ever know? tried to change your hey, spouse? Do you, do you know that you're on LSD property? It's public property. Property, thank you. But anyway, about the change. You can't change me, I can't change you. The only thing, we've got to change ourselves, right? You would agree with that, right? Because I can't force anything on you. But there's one change that needs to be made if this country is going to have permanent change, right? What is it? What is it? I heard somebody say you've got to get right with God. How do you get right with God? Who would know? God says that if you've ever lied, that all liars will have a part in the lake of fire. So, which one of us here can say we hadn't lied? We've all done that. So we're, we're doomed already, right? Now he also says that no thief will inherit the kingdom of God. Now who can say they have never stolen anything in their whole life? Think about when you were a kid going down to the convenience store and slipping that candy into your pocket, right? Yeah, We've well, all done here. that, right? There's a lot of Christians here. What are you talking about? Right. Well, I'm saying we've all stolen. We stand guilty before God. That's great. Now listen to this. God says that no are guilty. We've got to agree that we are sinners and that we deserve the wrath of God. We deserve the lake of fire. We deserve hell for eternity, right? I already agree with you. All right, so you agree. So what must I do to escape that? He did something. Well, I love Jesus too. We all agree with you. What is your point? Why are you here? I'm getting there. Okay. If, you, if you load the message, you know where I'm going. Go for it. Jesus said that unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Now listen to this. God did something for you so he, you don't have to perish. Now he didn't, God just can't outright forgive. A lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have a one-to-one -one with God, and he's just going to say, oh, come on in. No, this ain't the good old boy club. Here in West Texas, we kind of have that idea where God just going to wink at us and nudge, say, come on in. If he does that, he is unjust and he is wicked. If I stood in a... This is Lubbock High School. President Bill Clinton is here today promoting his wife Hillary, and we are coming out to give the gospel. 
We got Dorothy and Mandy with us here, <laughs> and me. And uh, we're gonna get around the corner. There's a big crowd around the corner TV stations. We're gonna go see if we can do an open air. <laughs> 